friends, welcome back or welcome if you're new. My name is Emma and this is Emma's Cottage. In today's tutorial, we're going to play with tumblers. We're going to practice sublimating them on them. Most of you that follow me on YouTube and Facebook know that this is new for me. Like everyone keeps begging me for a tutorial and I'm like, let me get good at it first. But I was like, you know what? No, that's kind of what my channel is all about is I have you guys to help watch me learn as I go. And then I turn around and I show you my mistakes and I show you my successes. So I've only done like maybe six tumblers probably. Um, and I have made a few errors, but nothing that I couldn't sell or nothing that I couldn't gift. Like they actually have turned out really great. Everything that I've learned, I've learned online through other creators on YouTube. So thank you so much again to those creators that also pay it forward to teach others like me and yourself um, on how to do this so that we can join in on the fun. So if this sounds like fun to you and you want to learn how I sublimate my tumblers, then go ahead and tag along. All right, let's talk about the things that you're going to need if you want to join along and follow me with this project. So of course you're going to need some type of equipment to be able to sublimate your tumbler. Um, I've got two different things that I've tried and that I like. Um, I will definitely tell you which method I prefer, but it kind of depends on what I'm doing. Um, but I went ahead and I got this oven from Walmart. I'll make sure that I leave a link to it below so that you know exactly the one that I got. Uh, but you'll see it in, in groups on Facebook. This is the one that has the double doors that will open. Um, I think it's one of the nicer models, but I went with this one because it will allow you to have your tumblers stand up in the oven. Um, and it allows me to do like three at a time, which is, I would say the plus of this one. And then this one here is a tumbler press. Um, and it's really awesome. It's one of the longest ones on the market. Um, my tumbler fits in here perfectly. Like it's actually too long, which is fine. Um, because if you guys don't know, when you have a tumbler, the, like this one, the middle of it is where most of the heat is retained. And then as you get towards the ends, it starts losing the heat. So my tumblers actually don't fit this entirety. So this is how long the press is right here. If I were to grab a tumbler, look at that. Like my press goes an inch at least on both sides. So you're going to get full coverage on this and not have to worry about it fading on the ends because you've lost um, the temperature on the ends of this press. Now they do sell other presses like this out there, but they're going to be shorter. They're going to be about the same size as a tumbler. And you will notice that you're going to see some fading on the ends of your tumbler. And it's because just like my big heat press back here with shirts, anytime you have a big iron or a press, it's always going to be a few degrees less on the outsides of the iron or the press. So you have your choice, at least in my tutorial, of some type of an oven, a, convention, a convectional oven, that it has to be that because the, the air has to be able to flow. Um, it cannot be a toaster oven. I mean, I'm sure people out there have done it and it has probably worked, but this is the, the convectional oven is the way to go. Now, one very important thing I wanna note, if you purchase this for sublimating, do not use it ever for food. Sublimation ink would definitely be toxic to eat um, and ingest, and you don't ever want to reuse this with food once you've used it for any type of sublimation projects. So just wanna make sure I throw that out there because a lot of people are like, oh, I'm just gonna do it in my convection oven in my kitchen. No, 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 don't do that. Um, and hopefully you guys know that, but just in case, just in case, there is a the few people out there that are like, I had no idea. Um, and honestly, once upon a time, I was that person. I had no idea anything about sublimation. So I am not judging you. I'm just here to teach you. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. What else are you going to need? So of course you're going to need some tumblers. I have an awesome vendor that I found you guys. Now you can find these all over. You can find them on Etsy. You can find them on tons of different websites. Um, we even have them at my craft source. Absolutely. But I do have a local vendor here in Washington that I get mine from. Um, I was really nervous the first time because like, oh my gosh, I hope this guy is not, you know, dishonest and I'm going to go and pay all this money and then not actually get my tumbler as well. He was a good, honest man and he followed through with the shipment and a lot of people in my group were able to take, you know, advantage of his prices, but his prices are amazing. He is selling these at least at this time of the recording of this video for $5 each. That's unheard of. Like mostly you're going to find these for nine to $12. 
Um, unless you're purchasing them overseas and waiting months and months to get here, that's the only time you're gonna get them that cheap. But to find somebody local here in the United States to get something for around $5 is unheard of, you guys. So I will make sure that I leave the link to his website in the description below. Make sure you check it out. Um, he may be out because literally all of my followers on Facebook were able to go in and, and, and purchase a lot of his inventory. So if he's out, don't fret. He continues to get more. Just keep watching his website. Um, and hopefully his prices won't go up too much, but honestly at $5 a pop, that's pretty awesome. Um, and I know that he does, uh, I want to say packages of 25 or packages of 50. Um, so yeah, pretty cool. What else are you going to need? This gets really hot. So does this. So you will absolutely need heat gloves. You guys don't use winter gloves or things like that. Like absolutely use heat gloves because these get very hot and you will burn your hands if you're not careful. Next thing you're going to need is some heat pads. I just use like silicone heat pads like this. Now when I pull them out of the oven or when I pull them out of my press, I can just set the heat pad down and then just set them right on top of the heat pad to protect the surface of my counter. You're also going to need some heat resistant tape. This is super, super key when you're doing tumblers because you have to have the paper so tight um, so that the image doesn't have any ghosting or any, um, like if it's not tight enough, sometimes you'll see that some areas are lighter than other areas and it's just because there was an air pocket there. Um, so the heat resistant tight tape is key. Um, and this dispenser is amazing and key for um, sublimating tumblers because as you turn it, it cuts the tape for you. Is that amazing or what? So it just, it helps so much because you're in one hand, you're trying to hold the tumbler so, so tight. And you'll see as we get further in the video and you're just height, you're holding it so, so tight. And to have to mess with um, breaking off another piece of tape has totally messed me up. So when I bought this dispenser right around the same time I started tumblers, it was like, a game changer for me. All I have to do is pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, and just put it on. It's amazing. If you're going to be using the oven, then you're going to want to use um, painter's tape of some sort. So I just use this regular, I don't even think it's a, it's a no brand painter's tape. Found it out in my husband's garage. I knew he would have some. And you want to make sure that you tape around the edges of your tumbler when you're using this oven. But when we're actually going to be doing this, like three pieces of heat tape is all this one's going to take. And I think that's it. I mean, besides some, you know, scissors and stuff like that to, oh, of course, you're going to need your sublimation print that you're going to be putting on your tumbler. Without this, no magic's going to happen. So um, I put together a few designs. Uh, I think there was one or two I purchased. These two I purchased. I'm not going to spend too much time showing them to you now because they're, they're mirrored. They're backwards anyways right now. Um, so I'll make sure that I list the Etsy shop that I got these from. Um, but these ones here, I actually designed myself just through bits and pieces of artwork that I found either online or design bundles. Um, again, I'm not going to spend too much time showing you what they look like because they're backwards right now, but you'll see what they look like once we press them. Um, and the way I like to do it is I like to put, I have a bigger printer, so I do my 11 by 17 so that I can fit two to a page. Um, but if you have the smaller printer, an 8x11 easily fits a 20 ounce tumbler on one sheet. So that's awesome too. Um, yeah, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to kind of move things around here so that we can start preparing our tumblers. Um, yeah, so let's get started. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to prepare our tumblers by putting the paper on them, the sublimation print and paper on um, but while we're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and turn this on and get it ready because it takes 20 minutes for this to get hot enough, um, for you to actually start sublimating. So that would be one of the drawbacks for this one. But at the same time, once it is hot enough, you can do like three at a time. So honestly, there's pros and cons with both of these. And at this point, I don't know yet if I have a favorite method, but I do like them both. So let's go ahead and get this one ready. So one thing that you need to make sure if you were to get this model is it always needs to be on this turbo convect. So that's, that's what's going to make it work and the air flow, right? Um, and then you just need to turn this all the way over. Sorry, I know my head's in the way, but I can't see all the way over to 20. And what that's doing is it's just going to start, you're going to hear it start clicking and making noise as it's, as it's heating up inside. Once that 20 minutes is up, hopefully we'll have our tumblers ready to go and we'll be able to throw like three of these inside. I think I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I've got six here. So maybe I'll do three in this method and then I'll do three with the press method. You want to make sure that you have plenty of space 
around your oven um, because there is heat vents on the top, on the sides, on the sides, and then a kind of a bigger one on the back. So make sure that you have this in a well ventilated area. Um, I wish my studio was a little bit bigger, but this, you know, get what you get, you're not gonna throw a fit. But I will say my poor family, they cry every time I um, sublimate tumblers because it doesn't smell very good. Like my shirts don't give off too much of a smell, but when I do the tumblers, they definitely stink up the entire house. <laughs> So what I'm doing here is just trying to take off any lint, any fingerprints. A lot of people take alcohol to it. I haven't found that I needed to. So they've worked for me just like this. This one's a little bit smaller, which is fine. That's just the way I cut it. So more than likely we're gonna see a seam on this one. Meh, it's fine. Again, I'm learning, you guys. I am learning and I'm gonna make mistakes. <laughs> like probably this tumbler, but it's okay. But what you really wanna try and do is pull as tight as you can, and then you wanna try and get, see how easy it is? Okay, see how the top matches up with the top? You wanna try and match it up as closely as you can so that your image won't be ski wampus. Now you can see that one matches up, but then the bottom doesn't. What that means is I probably cut it a little bit crooked and I probably just need to recut it. Now what I do, Again, I'm learning. I'm sure there's gonna be some professionals out there who are like, Emma, you're an idiot. That's not how you do it. Guess what? Oh, this is how I do it. This is how I'm learning. I start with the bottom. I kind of set it down. And then I will slowly slide it up just a tad and then try and meet it somewhere in the middle so that my design has equal space on the top and the bottom. And this is just for the oven ones. So the ones that I'm gonna throw in my press I can have the paper overlap on the bottom and the top by a little bit and it actually looks really good. So now that I have this nice and tight, then I'm gonna grab my tape. There's lots of different people that do it different ways but you could either tape it across like this and then just pull it really, really tight. And then just do that all the way down, tape it on the one side and then push hard and then pull it tight. Like that. I'm going to get that one. Then what I like to do is I just go and I'm going to do the same thing up. And this is just for this method is just if I'm using this oven. If I'm using the press, I prepare my cups or my tumblers totally differently. I do not tape them the same. And lucky for you, you're gonna see both my methods today. So something like that, obviously it's not like perfect, it's just tape, right? Then I need to get my painter's tape. And then I'm just gonna go over this tape just to kind of help seal it. Hopefully you guys can see this okay. I'll press it about right there. Add it on cricket. And I'm gonna push really hard as I go down. Just to kind of help seal that seal. <laughs> right? Isn't that cool? Just like that. Then on these mugs, I also want to go around the top edge and I want to go around the bottom edge. And to do that, I just just like it sounds. And I, I want to go in the same direction that I wrapped my paper. And I want to pull tight as I'm pulling because it's just going to help keep that seal nice and tight. Like that. And then we're going to do the same thing to the bottom. And again, you want to go in the same direction. So if I'm going this way, I don't want to go the other way when I'm doing the bottom because you're just you're pulling the paper 
in the same direction because you just want to keep pulling it tight. Now you're going to see that a lot of people use shrink wrap in a, co a convection oven. You totally can, 100%. I haven't tried it and mine have turned out just fine. So that's why, you know, I don't, maybe someday I'll try the shrink wrap, but as of right now, I don't feel like I need to because this works, this method works. And the shrink wrap is just one more thing I have to go buy. <laughs> and all I'm doing when I'm cutting this, you guys, I'm just cutting off the excess so that my um, seams will match perfectly. So if I had white, then you're gonna see white on the seam and you don't wanna see that. I'm gonna do whatever you can to prevent any of the seams showing. The other really important thing, you guys, make sure that you're putting it right side up, which honestly, I don't think I paid attention to this one. Yes, it's right side up, we're good. <laughs> if you put it on upside down, then you just ruined a tumbler. Now, some of you may ask um, the size. So the template that I did, oh, and I should also mention, I'm not gonna have that included in this video this week just because I was trying to hurry and get this video out to you guys. Um, but I will record a screen share on my computer on how I designed these um, just so that you guys can learn how to design your own. Um, sorry, this oven's getting hot and I don't want this by it. Um, but yeah, I designed them, most of them. I think there's two that I didn't. But the trick is you want, you want your template to be at least 9.3 width by 8.2 height is what I have found works really well for me. Now, if you feel like you don't have enough, like some of these are kind of tight, like I probably cut them too short. So you could, instead, doing, instead of doing 9.3, maybe do 9.4, just to give yourself a little bit of extra wiggle room. And again, starting at the top and working your way down, I think one of the biggest mistakes I see people do is they'll take the top and then they'll go down to the bottom and then you get air pockets in the middle. So I just keep pushing, like literally my fingers hurt. I push really hard to get the seams together. And I just keep doing that all the way down the mug until I get to the bottom. Again, the biggest thing on this method is just making sure that it is nice and tight. Now that I've got that taped up, I'm going to switch to the painter's tape. Again, I'm pulling super tight so that I can push really hard. I don't want any air bubbles. And then just push on it. Okay? And then we want to do the same thing on the top and the bottom, just like we did the other month. One thing that's really important, and I may get some of this just because of the way I'm taping it, but if you have your sheets just a little bit shorter, for this method at least, um, you're not going to have ghosting on the bottom of your cup when you do this wrapping technique. But if your paper is longer than your tumbler and you try and fold it over like I am right now, you're going to have ghosting or uh, lighter areas of sublimation because you're um, creating air pockets. But hopefully I cut mine short enough that we won't have that. Where are we at on time? We've got about five minutes left. Let's see if I can get this last one done. Show you this one really quick so this one is uh, one of my holiday ones and it's mainly going to be white with some snowflakes and different things on there so i didn't need it to be a, too, a super duper tight seal so that's why you see that gap there i'm fine with that because i it's not a full color like my other ones 
Same thing with the top. You can see I definitely have a lot of overhang there. Same thing, it's because I don't have a full color image, so I'm not worried about taping that top part. Not even really worried about taping the bottom either. Ooh, if you heard that, it's ready to go. Let's hurry and tape this and we will put them all in. Even though it's not hot yet, I still wear my heat gloves when I'm putting them in the oven because this oven is hot. And if my hand even slightly, like right now, just touching this glass, very, very hot. And if I accidentally touched that with my bare hand, I would absolutely get burnt. So the way I place these in is I'm gonna place the sticker or the tape side um, forward. No reasoning besides it helps me keep track of, I'm gonna turn them halfway through. So I set them like this. Close the doors. It's still on the turbo convect, and then I'm going to turn it to 10 minutes. And I'm gonna set my timer for six minutes. Hey Siri, set a timer for three minutes. Okay, three minutes and counting. Sorry, I meant three minutes. So the total time on this is gonna be six minutes. At three minutes, I'm gonna quickly open the door, turn them, and that's why I've got the tape all forward. I'm gonna turn them so that the tape is facing backward. Um, and then I'm going to let them go another three minutes and then they'll be done. While we're waiting, I'm going to go ahead and try and work on getting my next tumbler prepared that we're going to be putting in the actual press. And this process is going to be a little bit different. Way less tape, that's for sure. And as you guys noticed or maybe didn't notice, I did not put any butcher paper, nothing. That's just my sublimation paper. Um, and the paper that I'm using today, I believe I got from RTS uh, sublimationblanks.com. So Tamara's Tidbits is where I got this paper. I still had some of it left and I like the way it, it works. I feel like I was using HTV Romp for a little bit, their paper, and I, I need to keep testing it, but my printer kept getting smudge lines. Let me show you. And maybe you guys can help me tell me what's going on. But my printer, I, keep, I call them skid marks, you guys. <laughs> that's not what they are, but that's what I call them. See how my printer's doing this to some of my prints. And it looks like a roller or something. But when I switched my paper, it didn't do it anymore. So I feel like it has something to do with the thickness or whatever of this HTV wronged paper. It, it's a great paper, super vibrant. It's just my machine doesn't like it because the second I switch to another paper, Tamara's Tidbits, it didn't do this. So I think it's the thickness of the paper that was messing up and I have all of my prints set to presentation paper mat. So not, none of my other settings changed. It was just the paper. So it's kind of interesting. I'm gonna be very careful to not burn my arms. <laughs> my arms or wrists. Oh, my lamp side, you guys. This is why I need a bigger workspace. Okay. Stay. I'm gonna turn them. Ooh, can you guys see those images coming through? Okay. I had those doors open way too long. You wanna be really quick because you wanna try and keep as much of the heat in as you can. Hey Siri, set a timer for three minutes. Did she do it? I don't know if she did it. Hey Siri. Set a timer for three minutes. She quit. She was like, no, I've had enough of your timers, Anna. It's 301, so I'm gonna pull them out at about 303 because I've been playing. Okay, so this one's definitely different than what we did on those. This one, you can definitely have an overlap which I kind of like because it's gonna get me full coverage. So you just don't want a ton of overlap. Um, I think that they say like a quarter of an inch is probably the most you should have. When I mean overlap, I mean like, see it's puffing up on top. You don't wanna do more than that. On the top and the bottom. And then with this one, you only need three pieces of tape. So that's gonna be the benefit of this press is way less prep time. I'm just gonna do one piece here, one piece in the middle, and one piece at the bottom. That's it, that is it, you guys. I'm not making this up. 
Not making it up at all. There we go. This one is ready. What? Yeah. So definitely the benefit of the press. Way less preppy. Um, and saving money because I'm not going to have to buy so much painter's tape or heat resistant tape. But you'll see. You guys can be the judges on what you think is easier. These babies out. Just gonna set them right there. I'm going to turn the oven off, put my heat gloves on, practice safety, open the doors. Let's see if I can do better this time. And then just pull them out. They're extremely hot. Please, please, please make sure that your kiddos are not in the room, your animals not in the room. I've got two very curious cats that anytime I'm doing anything new, they love to come and be like, I mean, I always close my door, but people, things, they, they, they get curious. So if I were you, just do your best to make sure that everyone is away when you're doing this, because if anybody touches this with a bare hand or even just touching it along their, their arm, you're gonna get burnt. They're very, extremely, extremely hot. And some people will go ahead and peel them off right away. Um, and some people will let them um, sit here and develop. So I haven't found one way or another yet that I prefer, but I like to call it the peekaboo technique. And I just kind of like to see what well, how's it looking. It looks pretty good. Look at that peekaboo. So if you can bear to hold it, which my heat resistant gloves are really good. I mean, it's still definitely hot, but I can bear to hold this. There we go. Look how cute that turned out. I adore it. Totally cute. And I designed that. I mean, I bought the, oh, my Lanta. <clears throat> you guys, I screenshot this to put it in Word to print. Look at what I did. It has the crosshairs of the screenshot. Well, this is now my Tumblr. <laughs> Rookie mistake. Oh, my land, I swear. Okay, let's check out the other two. Let's see, let's see how I messed these ones up. <laughs> Look, I love it when it all comes off in one pill. <gasps> Look at those colors. So great. Okay, do you see that? Isn't that so pretty? It says common sense is a flower that doesn't grow in everyone's garden. I love it. Isn't that so pretty? So pretty. Now this one, I definitely have seams. Again, I'm still learning, but you can see the seams right here all the way up. It's not horrible. It's not terrible. Honestly, I think this would still sell. I would, I would still sell this. Sorry, I know you guys can see my ring light in that but you can also see the line there. Not too bad though, not too, not too shabby. I think what I need to do is um, on some of my prints, I'm gonna make them a little bit bigger than a 9.3. I'll probably make them like a 9.3.5 or 9.4. Um, and I think that will give me enough wiggle room to overlap that a little bit better. But that is so beautiful. I love this one. Okay, let's put on to the last one here. I will say, um, one thing I have noticed, the quicker you can get the blue painter's tape off of these, the better. If you let it cool down and dry, the painter's tape's really hard to get off of this. Um, this one's awesome. Oh, I like this one a lot. So this one says Hot Mess Express. You can see I didn't go all the way to the top or the bottom. I did that on purpose. I wish I could find, oh, my other mugs are over here. I'll go grab my other mugs that I did um, so far and I'll show you my oopsies. Um, but I just, I decided with the convection oven method, I don't want to go all the way to the top or the bottom. Now, if you use the shrink wrap, then you can, cause it seals it super tight. But if you're just using the tape, it just, it gives it air pockets and I'll show you what it does. There's the front and there's the back. Did anybody see a line? Oh, barely. There's barely a line. Like that is totally sellable. You guys, I saw who loves it. Me. Okay, let me show you some of the ones I've done. Um, let's see. 
I did some for my husband and my kids and they took off with them already. But here's some that I did. So here's a really exa good example of going down too far. So I didn't have that crisp line like you're seeing on this one. See that? And if you see at the bottom, see how it started to fade? It's not the same color of pink as up here. It's fading and it's because when I taped that over, I was creating air pockets. Same thing at the top. Hopefully you guys can see this. Yeah, it definitely is fading along the rim. Not horrible by any means, but I would say if, if I'm gonna continue to use this without the shrink wrap, then I'm gonna make sure that I leave like a quarter of an inch top and the bottom. Um, I also made this one. I love this one. Love wins. Isn't that perfect? I just love it. So cute. And this one's kind of meant to have a seam because it's it was actually an image that I put on a tumbler. So cute. And then I just thought I was playing around with this one. This one is definitely not one of my favorites. Um, but this is an oopsie one that I didn't wipe off the tumbler before I put the image. Ooh, scared the crap out of me. Did you guys hear that? When it turns off, it like fluctuates and stuff and it like, <sighs> yeah, it was blowing up. I'm okay. <laughs> okay, anyways, I didn't wipe this one off. Um, and so you can see like little pieces of black. So that is why it's so important to make sure that you clean your surface before to make sure that you get off any little imperfections on there that are going to show up. And then I didn't like the seam on this one. You can definitely tell the difference. It has nothing to do with how I wrapped it. It's just the print. Like this print is very pink on this side and then it stopped on that side. So I probably wouldn't press this one again just because I don't like the seam. But this one says drink in my hand, toes in the sand. So it's so cute. Someone might still want it, but... I like to be able to show you guys my oopsies so that you guys know that I am human too. This is probably one of the, that's a really bad oopsie, <laughs> but you can't really notice it unless you like look. Nice little crosshairs there. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, um, I'm gonna go ahead and finish preparing the other two glasses. I'm not gonna show it on film. I'm just gonna clean everything up, clear everything off. I'm going to bring up my other press make some room here. And then we're going to go ahead and press these last three. And the reason I'm not going to show this apart on camera is because it's so easy. Literally it's three pieces. Um, and then I've got overlap on the bottom and I've got overlap on the top. So I'll meet you back here in a few minutes. All right. We are ready to press with the tumbler press. Now a really cool thing about this tumbler. Um, I don't think I mentioned it at the beginning of the video. This came from Pacific Northwest sublimation press or PNW sublimation press. Um, they they have a YouTube channel, they have a Facebook group. I will make sure that I link it down below, but that is where I got my press from in case you're interested. I absolutely love it. It wasn't on the cheap side, uh, but I did a lot, a lot of research because I wasn't going to buy something and then have to turn around and buy something else later. I want this to last me a long time. Um, I want to say I spent around $500 for it, you guys, but if I'm going to be knocking out tumblers and I want them to look good, I wanted to make sure that I had a really good quality press that is going to stand the time. And, um, I, I've been very, very happy with this press. So the way this works is like a big, wonderful, comfortable hug. Um, it's gonna hug your tumbler super, super tight, and that's why it's gonna get such really, like, really good coverage on these tumblers. Now, one thing I was really surprised about on this is they, um, they don't have you use butcher paper, blowout paper. I was so surprised because I would think, well, isn't the image gonna come off on you know, the heat part, but it doesn't. I've done it many, many times and um, it definitely bleeds through. You can see the image coming through, but it does not hurt my press and it does not go on to the next tumbler. So kind of cool. So I've got my resting temperature at 350 and you guys are gonna see that this is actually, oh, I was doing, I gotta change something really quick. I was doing a ceramic mug the other day and so you have to press those for 135 seconds. But when I'm doing, a tumbler. It only needs to be for 30 seconds. Okay. So now that I've got that at my resting temperature, the way these heat presses work is this tumbler is cold or room temperature. So when I put this inside of this press, it's automatically going to start cooling down this press. Okay. Um, what I do is I have this tape part. I kind of have it facing forward a lot like I did in the oven. I'm just going to slide it right on in here. Now, one thing I will say, Actually, I'll tell you here in a second. I'm gonna slide it right in the middle. And I can tell you right here, this is how much I have on this side and same on the other side. So I have a ton left over. I'm gonna go ahead and seal it shut. 
you're gonna see this is gonna start going down. I don't know if you guys can see from there, but this is going down. It's now saying 338, 337, 336. So the temperature is going down, 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 down because my tumbler is not super hot. It's room temperature right now. Um, so what that's doing is it's going to get at the same temperature as the tumbler and then together it's going to heat back up to our sublimation temperature, which on here is going to be 365 is which I, what I have found is my sweet spot for this tumbler press. So this is going to take a little bit. In fact, I'm going to watch my watch. It says 331. So what it's going to do is I'm going to watch this. It's going to go up to the 365 and then as soon as it hits 365 then it's going to start counting down the 30 seconds that's on here and it will beep then i'm going to open it up i turn it just like i did in the oven and i put the tape on the other side i'm going to close it and then it's going to do another 30 seconds the nice thing now though is the second time i press it doesn't have to go all the way down because the tumbler is already heated up so once it actually gets to temperature it's pretty quick um, and you can knock through these tumblers really pretty quick. Um, but one thing I did want to point out is because I have all this extra space, my tumbler is sitting right here in the middle. It definitely, it does such a great job at full coverage. So like on this print here, how I made sure that I went up and, you know, I have a, a line around without the, um, what is the word I'm looking for? The shrink, okay, without the shrink wrap, um, that was my only option for this. But with this tumbler, you can have the paper, like I said, just a little bit longer, and it's hugging this tumbler. It's just giving it a nice, lovely hug, and you can have full coverage on this thing. The other nice thing about this press, again, I did my research, is you can fit two mugs, ceramic mugs, or the metal camping mugs, or anything like that. You can fit two in at a time. So if you need to knock out two at a time, you can do that with this press. It also is long enough that I haven't tried this yet, but like mugs like this, tumblers, I guess, like this that are longer, um, even like the bullet type tumblers, all of those are definitely going to fit in this press because it's long enough. So I would highly encourage you, if you are going to be sublimating a lot of tumblers, if you're gonna be sublimating a lot of different sizes, if you're gonna be sublimating lots of different mugs, then do some research and purchase, like spend some money and actually get a really good heavy duty press um, that's going to be able to press everything and not have to get a press that you have to get different attachments for just to be able to press something longer. So that's why, you know, I'm super happy with this. I'm not affiliated with this PNW Sublimation Press. They have a group. I forgot the name of the group off the top of my head, but I will put it in the description below. Ooh. Um, I'm not affiliated with them. I'm just happy with my purchase. Okay, so I'm gonna open it up. You guys heard it beep. I'm just gonna reach my hand in there with my pull out just a little bit. And then I'm gonna turn it very softly to the tape on the other side. And then I'm gonna close it. Again, you guys probably can't see this, but it's now counting down. The temperature has actually stayed the same. It's still at 265 because this mug is super warm now because it's been in there. Um, oh, that's what I wanted to mention. Before I was doing it from this angle and I was trying to move things around, I will suggest if you're going to use this machine, use it from the side like this, so much easier. And then I'm just going to pull it out. Ta-da! You kind of see the image there? Coming through. I'm going to do my peekaboo method. Peekaboo! Look at it. That looks good to me. Oh my gosh, that seam is insanely amazing. I did so good on that seam. How cute is that? Life is better at the beach. So this is one of the images that I found on Etsy. I will make sure that I have the, uh, the link in the description below if you guys want to go find the Etsy shop that sold me this. Super cute, full coverage, top and bottom, no ghosting at all. That is why I love this press. Love it. Um, I like them both. I like them both. I like both methods, but I'm kind of leaning more towards this. Let's go ahead and shove this one in and get it started. It's gonna count down, I mean, the temperature's gonna go down just because this mug is warm or cold room temperature. So we're gonna go through the same process we did with the first one. Um, okay, so while this is heating up, let's just talk a little bit about the two, my experiences with the two. And I've somewhat said that throughout this video. Um, with the oven, it takes 20 minutes to heat up. A lot of people forget that step and then it won't, like your, your tumblers aren't going to 
sublimate because it didn't get hot enough. So it takes 20 minutes to heat up before you can even start it. Um, and then I have found that I only can do three at a time. If you do more than that, they don't turn out very well. Um, and they take six minutes. Okay, so this one heats up probably in three to five minutes. Um, and then each tumbler takes, I forgot to look, but it's 337 and I've already gotten done with a tumbler. So um, I would say it probably only takes, once you close it, each tumbler, what time did I say? Did I say 303 or 301? I don't remember, but let's just say each tumbler takes maybe five minutes. Um, and I think as you get going, it actually doesn't take as long because it's getting hotter and it just works a little bit quicker. Now I know that they have some guidelines um, I don't remember them off the top of my head with how long you should be pressing for. I know it says that you should be taking a break every so many presses, like turning the machine completely off, letting it cool down for a little bit and then starting up again. And then do that just so that you're not running out the, the, the motor and the heat and all of that stuff. So, but I don't know that off the top of my head, but if you guys want to look into this company, um, I'll make sure that I have the link below so that you guys can look into it. Really quick, you guys, I wanted to show you something. When you squeeze it, it kind of puts like a little arch on top. Do you see that? Cause it's squeezing it so tight. I was really worried that maybe I didn't um, have my paper tight enough and that we were gonna have like a weird look on it. But looking at this tumbler here, there is absolutely nowhere that you can see anything went wrong. Oh, this one's done. Let me turn it. That was a close call. Um, so yeah, I was kind of nervous about it arching right there and maybe creating an air bubble and that we would see that. It's crazy how fast these cool down. It's only been a few minutes, so it's already cool. Um, but you can't see anywhere where we have any discoloration or any light, and maybe it's just this image, but nah, I think it looks pretty good. I am like mind blown by this one. This one's amazing, love it. Ta -da. Oh, this one's gonna be cute. Oh my gosh, those colors are insane. Did I do this upside down? I don't know. No, I didn't. Oh my gosh, I thought I did. It's just some of the words are upside down. Don't scare me like that. Oh, it's hot. It's hot. Too cool for school kids. Look at it. Look at it. That is adorable. I'm like trying to figure out if it was upside down or not, but it's like the patterns are every which way. So I guess it doesn't matter how you do it. Like that heart is like that, kiss is like that smaller face. I mean, who knows? But kind of a cool print, huh? I love it. Too cute. Too cute. Super, super bright, vibrant images. Full coverage. No fading on the ends. Like it's just absolutely perfect. Okay, let's go for our last one. Um, one tip that I just remembered, I didn't do it this last time. And I was like, oh, I forgot. Um, another tip that I wanted to show you when you're using this machine. So the first tip was it's easier to use this machine from the side for me. That's just my preference. It's easier for me. And then the other tip is to have the open end facing you because it's easier to grab it and turn it or grab it and pull it out. So I'm going to go ahead and slide this one in and lock it into place. And then we'll wait another, I think it's usually on average, it's been about three minutes per mug, maybe a little bit less. So kind of cool. Last one, so exciting. Oh, I got really excited, but I still have to flip it. <laughs> I almost forgot to flip it. I would have been so sad. You know what I think I just did? Again, I'm learning. I'm learning, you guys. You're watching me learn. <laughs> I don't think I shoved that last one in far enough. No, I think I had it too far down. I mean, it was still in the press, but it wasn't like right in the middle. So I may, this one may have, my neighbors are walking by and they're like, what is she in there doing? <laughs> you know what I'm gonna do? This is a big no-no, but I'm doing it anyways. I'm just going to turn it one more time back to this front 
and I'm just gonna close it just for a few seconds. You probably shouldn't do this, but I'm just worried that I didn't have it far enough down and I wanna make sure that the um, image on the top of the mug still gets pressed. And I'm only gonna do it for a few seconds. Let's try that. Hopefully I didn't just ruin it. All right, let's, ooh, it's smoking. Let's do a peekaboo. Yep, I was right. I didn't have it down far enough. So like I was telling you guys, the end of your tumbler press is definitely a different temperature than the middle. And if you don't have it in far enough, you can experience um, fading. And that's what happened with this one. So learn from my, state, my mistakes. See how it faded on the top? And it looks great on the bottom because I had it in, but yeah, I didn't like that one very much, but still kind of cute, right? It's the most wonderful time of the year. And I will be showing you guys how I made these designs. Like I mentioned before, um, let me hurry and turn this off. Like I mentioned before, I just didn't have time to record that today, but I'll try and record it sometime this week or next weekend um, and show you how I came up with these designs within Cricut Design Space so that you too can learn how to make your own designs. it for today's tutorial. What do you think? Is this something that you want to try too? So much fun. I enjoyed my time with you today. I had so much fun, even though I made some mistakes. Oops. We all do, right? And at least I'm making them so that hopefully when you guys go to do your sublimation tumblers, you won't make the same mistakes that I did. Or if you do, just join the group. <laughs> Anyways, it was so much fun today learning something new, or should I say the last few weeks, learning something new. A lot of people in my Facebook group said, hey, Emma, you got to do tumblers. You got to do tumblers. So I listened to them and I did tumblers and they're right. It is so much fun and it is so much easier than you even can imagine. If I can do it, you guys can do it too. Super easy, super easy to sell. Um, and then the margins that you can make that, um, the income margins, I mean, amazing. So if I buy these tumblers for five bucks and I can turn around and sell them from 18 to 30, depending on if I have the special lids on top or not, those are some good margins, some pro good profit margins that you guys can sell tumblers. Um, the only thing that I always remind everybody, be very careful with what you sell. Make sure that you guys are not trying to sell anything that's trademarked that's going to get you in trouble. So I can't wait to see what you create. Please join us in our Facebook group, which is Emma's Cottage DIY. DIY, do it, do it yourself. DIY, I always do that, you guys. Emma's Cottage, DIY. Um, and show me what you create. Show us all what you create. We have a really great group of some awesome people from beginners to really experienced people that we bounce ideas off of each other and just lots of encouragement. It's a super great group. So go ahead and join us. Show us what you guys create. Show us what you guys come up with. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Um, I couldn't have done this without you guys. I just hit 10,000 subscribers. Mind blown. I had no idea. Um, I just started this channel back in May and I, here we are in October and I, I, I never even fathomed that it would grow this quickly. Um, and same thing with the Facebook group, the amount of friends that I've been able to make, it has been so awesome. And I'm just, I'm so honored to be able to teach you guys and share with you guys what I have learned and what I will continue to learn. So as always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. And the most important thing, you guys, don't forget to ring that bell so that you will get notified anytime that I upload a new video. Until next time, we'll see you later, friends.